there, Don McVeigh here. I hope you're having a great time with Stamp Affairs so far. This next challenge is all about creating your own embellishments, and I've used some paper tray dies, pattern papers, buttons, etc., to create a set of butterfly embellies. And I've also got a few tips for you along the way on how to mix and match pattern papers when creating embellishments. Okay, so let's get started. I have die cut a pile of uh, butterflies and um, some little circles here. I've used the Signature Series Butterfly Die, the largest butterfly from the Beautiful Butterflies collection, and uh, two dies, the circle and the butterfly from the Love Lives Here collection. I've just literally taken a random assortment of papers and um, die cut enough so that I could do at least five sets of uh, or five individual butterflies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by sorting them out here and I know that I'm going to start with the largest butterfly in the back. I've got five of those and now I'm going to start piling these layers on. Now I wanted to show you um, a couple of times lately we've done some Make It Monday videos talking about how to mix pattern papers and primarily that was for use like as a background pattern on a card but the same general rules apply when you're putting together little embellishments like this and you've got multiple patterns and you want to know how to mix them um, to get the most pleasing look um, you, you'll you use those same principles that we did in those other couple of videos but I wanted to show you what I mean here now for instance I've got this next size of butterfly that I know I want to layer on top of these obviously I don't want to do the same pattern on top of the same pattern because I'm trying to get kind of a little mixed and matched look here and I also know that I want to try and get all three my general color scheme is dark chocolate raspberry fizz and some vintage cream so I want to try and get all three of those colors on each of these five butterflies that I'm putting together so that would mean that this next butterfly this particular chocolate stripe should go again probably not stripe on stripe probably not brown on brown which means it should either go on the pink or on the cream for now we'll put it there you're just I just kind of wanted you to see my um, sort of my train of thought as I'm going through laying these out I'm trying to not have the same color or the same pattern layered right one on top of the other so see I've got those four laid out but now I've got pink stripes on brown stripes and I don't really want that to happen so I'm gonna shift these around a bit I'll put the pink stripe on the brown dot and the pink damask then can go on the brown stripe so we're good now I've got a couple of circles and a few more small butterflies and I'm gonna do the same thing here I've got chocolate raspberry fizz and cream this one's got cream chocolate so it needs some raspberry fizz that one needs something cream this one is gonna end up with well that's chocolate dots on dots I've got two chocolates here so obviously I'm gonna need to uh, mix things up a little bit I'll do the cream there and then I'll do a dot here and then the way that I'm going to get some cream on that one so that I have all three colors is I'm going to put a cream button so we still take care of that getting all three colors on uh, and I've already kind of pre-selected some buttons here just to make things a little bit quicker but uh, another thing I wanted to show you is not all buttons are created equal when it comes to what's going to work on a card I don't know how well you can see these two buttons. This one is definitely more brown and this one can you see has a slightly orange cast to it and when I put that on this card 
it may not show up in the video, but it definitely looks a little bit more orange than what I would like. So you want to be sure, and even when you're selecting buttons, make sure, because you know if you're using the paper tray buttons, there are lots of different shades of the same color and lots of variety in the the texture and the style of the button. Some, like this one, are definitely more sort of shiny and iridescent and that works really great in some cases. But in this case, it just makes it look more orange and it kind of doesn't go with the pink very well. So, um, that's just another little tiny tip for you. So I think I've got everything laid out pretty much how I want. So I have decided that for today, I'm just going to use some uh, scrapbook adhesives Easy Runner tape here to put a little adhesive just right in the center of each layer and then I'm going to stack them up with that adhesive in between and I'm only doing it right in the middle so that when we get to the end and I want to fluff all of these layers forward all that's stuck together is right in the center and the wings can can pop forward a bit so that's the goal here with this one gotta be a little tricky around that hole and I know that there's a heart there and I'm gonna cover it up but that is totally fine with me if you don't want the button you could totally leave the heart and just let that be your top layer but I'm going for lots of layers here so I'm going with it so I'm gonna put these together Again, I'm not really worrying about the fact that some adhesive is showing through that tiny heart there because I'm going to cover that up with a button. Now I've already got some dark chocolate twine. This comes on a spool like so, but I've already got it threaded on a big needle here. And I'm just going to thread all of these buttons. And I started doing this a long time ago with particularly buttons that are going to be on butterflies. Um, I just like to leave some tabs of the twine sticking out at the top and that way they can sort of serve as antenna on the butterfly once I stick them on. Can you see that? So once the button is threaded I'm just going to use a bit of score tape to adhere the button right to the center of the butterfly. Just like so. I'm going to make sure it's mashed down really good in the center so that button doesn't pop off when I fluff the wings forward. And there's one done. These are pretty quick and easy embellies to make, but super, super cute. Particularly if you do your die cutting all at once, it goes pretty fast when you're running multiples through the machine, through your die cutting machine all at the same time. This one's going to be a little bit different than the last one because it only has two holes so I've decided to just tie a little knot in the front instead of making antennas. I like making each one just a wee bit different than the last if I can just to give it some uniqueness a little of its own personality. One thing I'll even do sometimes is change the pattern of the stitching on the buttons. Most of the time when I've stitched the four button, the four hole buttons, I've made a little X in the center, but in this case I just made the two little straight lines 
just fun little details like that that are super simple to change up but just give another little bit of added interest to your individual little butterflies. And there we have it. Five little butterflies ready to be used on a card or a project and they were super simple to make. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. I can't wait to see your take on the challenge. Be sure to head over to Nicole Hetty's blog for all the information on how you can play along too. Thanks so much for watching guys and have a great day. This has been Don McVeigh for Paper Tray Inc. Mm -hmm.